Um, okay guys, I just want to do a quick shaky cam video as I figure this out for my car. I've taken apart, uh, I unraveled the entire harness, um, and there's a few interesting things. Uh, there's, anyway, uh, right off the bat, I think this might answer the question of why you need the aux cable for some and not all. The aux cable uh, plugs into the main connector that goes into the head unit, right? But here, let me get this out of the way. You can actually see uh, it also splits off and goes along here. And if you were wondering, if you looked at your harness, it had this sticking out. This goes um, back here. And not only does it connect on this side of the harness, um, it also goes through to this side. And if we look at what pins it goes to, um, you can see it goes to uh, top two from the left and then bottom, sorry, top two from the right and then bottom second from the right. So. Um, I know in uh, my car that uses uh, fiber optics, none of these wires actually go to anything. Like, um, if you're not familiar, this and this and this is replaced entirely by the fiber optics, so maybe it's just not possible if you have Logic 7 to do it without the aux cable. Now, the other interesting one is... Um, these two white pairs because they look like they also have something to do with sound and these two white pairs go to their respective side of the part of the harness that I believe is for audio right like most cars you have your front and back and then left and right channels they're usually pairs of green white gray and purple so I'm almost certain that that's for uh, sound on the uh, non logic 7 Harman Kardon stereo and that also doesn't exist on the stock harness of the car, right? So let's take a look at the stock harness of the car. Um, all it has is the um, power and CAN bus, right? The, uh, all the other pieces I showed you are absent and then just fiber optics to replace those three other like sub harnesses, I guess. So that might give a clue um, and then the other thing I was trying to figure out is just what the hell is going on with all these different can wires. So from the top there's a green wire called CAN2 that goes to nothing. And then a purple wire um, called CAN1. And then at the bottom it's got, um, looks like from the I drive side it's got um, can A and then from the uh, car side um, one of these is can high sorry about the camera one of these is can high and it splits out into three wires and one of these is can low and it splits out into three wires and uh, I still haven't quite made sense of these uh, yet. Thanks. Okay, um, I've disconnected some of these and reconnected them just to untangle them and it makes a lot more sense now. So all that's happening here is uh, can high and low come out from the car side and one of the uh, you know three wires for each, one pair of high and low plugs in here and goes into the exact same pinout on the iDrive side. So that's just one-to-one, -one, like just car to, car to, uh, well not necessarily iDrive, car to CIC or your stereo, necessary, right? Then the other pair, along with power and ground, go to uh, the X1 key, which is only needed on like certain versions of the X1. So this does absolutely nothing. <clears throat> and then of course, I believe for, well, obviously for the iDrive input and the uh, LVDS, the monitor switching, another pair of high low go here and then connect, in my case, to CAN1 and go all the way up to the display. Now, I'm actually kind of curious what CAN2 would ever do possibly because um, 
it looks like no matter what, these two would connect, right? You're just like, you have to. Um, and this is completely optional. So the only thing that's variable between the two are these. And I don't know if maybe that's a matter of CIC or not, but I thought that was all controlled uh, through software. So I might actually try switching these uh, just to see what, what it does. Okay guys, uh, one thing I realized about the X1 key that's actually cool for me is if you've retrofitted iDrive and need somewhere to plug in the iDrive controller, um, this is perfect. This has the power and can high and low. And a few days ago, in anticipation of this, um, I bought this and it was like 30 bucks for what I would consider to be a lifetime supply of various connectors. And it turns out uh, this, is, this is the identical connector. So what I'm going to do is take the thing I did three years ago, and it's really bad. Take this. This is how I'm currently wiring up my iDrive controller. And plug it into that X1 key portion of the harness. So that's, that's kind of cool.